What's up, everyone? I'm Shafi Malik, and you're listening to the Who Dropped Popcorn podcast. The premise is simple. One of us picks a film that we know none of the others have seen. The rest of the group watch the film, and we get together here to discuss it. Joining me tonight is Dave McHugh. Stop, stop, stop. Andy Newlands. Bob McClough. <laughs> and all the way from the somewhat north of England, Kyle Hammond. Oh, I forgot to think of an intro. Hello. Yeah, hey, up. Carl Martin here. Hey, up. Hey, up all you, Kaffir. <laughs> <Bastard. laughs> that was good enough. Here's your warning. We'll be going into heavy spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, we thoroughly recommend you watch it before listening to this. This episode's choice is Andy's. Andy has chosen TT 3D, Closer to the Edge, a documentary directed by Richard de Aragay, which I think that's how you pronounce it, and released in 2011. The Kron calls the famous TT competition that takes place every year, where the world's top bikers assemble in the Isle of Man to race for the prestigious title, King of the Mountain. Andy, why did you choose this film? Uh, I'm a motorcyclist, so anybody who loves motorbikes will naturally love this documentary. I watched the documentary because of my love for motorbikes, and I just I could not believe uh, how good it was. So last week, Shafi said something that I found quite nice, that he'd wanted to introduce some variation into our life. So he did that by making me watch a film about a cow, which changed my life. I've watched it three times it was a since. Ball. It was oh, really? You've watched it three times in? Yeah, mate, I love it. I absolutely love it. So I took the risk, and I think this is a risk, um, instead of choosing the film that I was going to get the guys to watch, which was going to be The Lighthouse, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to, I'll show uh, I'll show them something that I love um, to see what their comments are. So I think they very nervous have seen The Lighthouse anyway. Well, I'll Actually, see you later. Yeah. Right, I won't bother then. Cheers. I think you made the right choice because it's something that's personal to you. So, uh, and yeah, you know, thank you. I don't think anyone else would have chosen this film. So, not really a film, though, is it? <laughs> no, and I'll never choose a documentary again. I thought it was like the point of this we would choose a film, but yeah, sound. It is a film. It's a, it's film. a film. Documentary film, yeah, sound. I had to Google that earlier. Apparently, it's a British a documentary, documentary film. By Richard Zaragoz, mm. Aragon's uncle. Just because it's longer doesn't mean it's a film. You had to Google it to find out whether it's a documentary or not. <laughs> it's a documentary film. Yeah, I just Google documentary film. So what, what makes it a documentary film? What, because it's a bit longer than an hour? I mean, come on. Just I'm it's just a film. Treat. It's mm. got a plot. Did he get a theatrical release? 3D, he actually, did. he did, yeah. yeah. It was at the cinema. So maybe that's what makes it a film. Yeah. What makes mm. Blood Simple a film? Because I I'm not sure that should be classed. Crime film. Brothers, mate. <laughs> That's what makes it a film. Just boring screen. It should be. It should have its own fucking name. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. There wasn't a, a machine going really fast. <laughs> round and round and round. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's say, Andy. What um, was... have you? What, I mean, I guess obviously you you would watch this if you yeah. Uh, yeah. if it's sort of on the telly or whatever you know you but how sort of a, one how have, have you been following TT before watching this documentary yeah so I used to watch TT all the time up until I had children and then <laughs> my television has only had a variation of children's TV shows on it but recently <laughs> since Ethan turned about six or seven I've got been able to get back to the sports channel um, and back to the TT I've got a friend called Mark Hannon who messages me about biking sometimes as well and i just love it like i just it's it's like you're flying do they so they televise tt is that right yeah 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 and my, my granddad like wants to go but i all he talks to me about it my whole family's into bikes like i absolutely love motorbikes uh how long have you been biking for how long have you been uh, riding a 16 was my first bike i Got out of 50cc and then a couple of years later I bought a bigger bike. I took it to London um, and it got stolen within 24 hours and then I had to get the train to university for three years, which is pretty <laughs> depressing. And then, uh, yeah, came back to Jersey. I got the Terminator bike. Dave's dad saw me on the bike and <laughs> said, what the fuck is wrong with, with Newlands? Does he think he's Arnold Schwarzenegger or something? 
And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Those sunglasses we suggest you do. <laughs> <laughs> giggity, giggity. <laughs> so, yeah, it's my passion, man. Just like, you know, Kyle's passion is music. Your passion is films. Dave's passion is wanking. Motorbikes <laughs> is my passion. So edit that as you will. Have you <laughs> ever been to Isle of Man? No, never made it. Never made it. It's impossible to get a ticket for this thing because it's such a, it's such a global phenomenal really? phenomenon. It's one of the most popular events. You're just trying to get there. Right. How does it work as yeah. buying a ticket if you just sort of stand by the side of the road or if you stood in one of those fields? Like, could you not yeah, just you go get, and... you get tickets to the different sectors, but you've got to prove, like, accommodation over there. But trying to oh, get wow, a campsite yeah. or a B&B or a hotel, oh, it's like, course, it's like a five-year yeah. waiting list. It's just insane. Wow. Right. Gosh, that's mad. Yeah. I know. You should move. Move to Isle of Man. I know. Take care of it. For those that are listening and that haven't watched the film, uh, do you, Andy, do you want to sort of describe exactly what the TT is? You know, what what the rules are, where, what, how long it takes? The, T, the TT is is uh, it's time trial, right? So they basically go around the Isle of Man and it's fastest man or woman wins. And there's different different categories of bike. Like the, the one goal is go as as you can. And you've got to remember, it's, it's, this is a, I'm not talking about a racetrack here. It's on the roads. So there are, there's no, there's no margin for error. It's, there's potholes. There's, um, yeah, so it's been going on for about 100 years. And it's, um, it's just a race. It's the most insanely dangerous insane. race. 1907. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that just yeah. mad? 1907. I was just blown away. I was like, wow. I my kind of think of a motorbike. The first sort of thought I have a motorbike is like World War Two, maybe. Nineteen oh seven. Sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I was just so blown away by that. And then so when that documentary was made, it's like 104 years. And that's it's just oh, before the Titanic and stuff. You know, people Absolutely. were racing around the Isle of Man. Yeah, and they well go back the and they go back. And it all, as I say, it takes place along public roads through the Isle of Man. It's just under 40 miles of terrain and it's it's packed with thousands of spectators it's 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 mental like if you if even if you don't like motorbikes or you don't like cars like just i don't see how you wouldn't find this exhilarating to watch uh, uh, so dave it sounds like um the way you sort of started this discussion um that you have much more complimentary things to say about this film than ford versus ferrari uh yeah yeah 100 percent. like because um it's so different. The thing is, like, it's it's not it's it's such a privilege to be a part of something like this, to see these guys and watch this. It's just mad. I feel like a, a kid, anyone could have made a, a documentary about this. And it would have been good because of the subject matter. It's just it's just mental. Like, it's not really considered an extreme sport, but it's to me, it seems to be the most extreme of extreme sports. Maybe only up there with free climbing, where if you make one mistake, one, you can die. And that's why it just, that, why the documentary just blew, that's why I was blown away from the moment it started to the moment it ended. I was just, for want of a better word, on the edge of my seat. It was just insane. 200 people had died since it started, or over 200 people, was it? It was about that. So one, two people every exactly, year. Carl. Yeah, that's mental. That's mental. And one person, it's one, it's yeah. one for every five miles. No. So yeah, because that guy, forgive me, I can't remember his name. That's the thing. So that's what they say in the film. It's like, it's, it's good that it's not being banned because no, no one's forced to do this. Yeah. Yeah, they make a point of that, don't they? They say that. Yeah, it's the last, it's the last, like, where the bureaucrats haven't gone in and gone, no, 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 you can't. Like, humans are still allowed to go and test yeah. themselves to the absolute max. Isle of Man as well. You can get away with murder in the Isle of Man. Like, secret, secret place. It's funny you mentioned bureaucrats because bureaucracy is sort of the antagonist of this film, right? It's um, oh. it's, it's uh, Guy Martin versus the machine, quite literally. Ah. I, didn't, I didn't even plan that fun. Yes, Shabby, that's quality. Can someone sort of expect... Because there is there was something that confused me because when Guy Martin got penalized at the end of that race he sort of yeah. disappeared so they didn't they didn't have they couldn't interview him yeah and then 
Yeah, so I'm yeah. just sort of recalling it. So you guys, so I'm writing this. So then in the second, at the end of the second race, he sort of, there's footage of him like arguing with someone, but it, it's not about yeah. that second race. It's about the first race. Is that right? Yes. yes. He just, yes. He just, just, he just stormed off. He stormed off the first time. Sorry. Yeah. He stormed off the first time and the second time he had a guy. He's stewing on it. He's so. Yeah. It's such a ridiculous penalty to receive for such a minor infringement. What was it? And 60 I, I agree with it. 0.129 or something. 60.129 kilometers an hour for a 30 yeah, second he was, he was, penalty. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But he did it in the second race, Shafi, because he got a podium in the second race. So rather than appear right. on the podium out of protest, he didn't show until he came eventually. Yeah. Man. Who was he arguing, though, at the end? At, when you, you sort of see him... Like just one of the, he was just a marshal, this guy. Okay. Just like a random yeah. marshal. Any authority figure would have got him, I guess, at that point. Yeah. It looked like he was doing it with a crew member, but maybe I'm wrong. What, the young guy? The young chubby guy? I can't, I can't remember, but I just... I was yeah, really maybe he was they... crew, but he was, he was certainly no one important. Like, he, was just, yeah. he was just a vessel for guy to vent at. Yeah. I mean, I guess there are rules, so when you're going into the pit or out of the pit, there is a a, a strict um, speed limit, isn't there, in, in most of these sort of sports. But, yeah, it, I, I, it's a funny one, like, because he did break the speed limit, I guess, but, you know, 30-second penalty, because his, his Scottish manager sort of said five seconds would have been fair, and that yeah. maybe make up, you know, you, 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 for whatever you've gained, you're sort of maybe double last on it. You may have gained a second or so, but you get minus five. That seems about fair, and he would have still had a podium finish. So that, that yeah. ball is probably like 50 years old when the bikes were going maybe max 100. <laughs> 30 seconds, you can make up quite a bit. Now they're going like 200 miles an hour. You've got no chance. <laughs> this is just exactly. literally just do that, and you're like, all of a yeah. sudden you're doing 60. But if I may, I, don't, I didn't get the feeling that it was Guy Martin against bureaucracy and stuff like that. I felt that this, to me, this film didn't have that sort of, Ford versus Ferrari or anything feel to it. It was this was just about these guys doing it. I didn't feel like there was a bureaucratic red tape or anything preventing them from doing anything. He just made a mistake on something that is a rule. But I didn't feel like there was sort of people in suits or anything trying to stop it. Maybe a little bit with the sponsorship and stuff, but and he was a bit of a slight renegade. But ultimately, these guys are all. I, I got to just. I didn't feel like that at all. I just felt like this was guys putting their life on the line and most people step back and let them do it. Yeah, it just highlighted every now and then a few balance. Yeah, just like they off the chain respect. It's profiling. I mean, it's sort of a narrative for guy, you know, because one thing is that when you, when Andy first announced the the film and then you guys are going, oh, it's got Guy Martin. I didn't have a clue what Guy Martin is. And the, the sort of the how they were sort of profiling him was he's a bit of a loose cannon. He's a bit of a, you know, he's a rebel, you know. So I, th I think, I mean, it's not the main theme of the, the film, but I'm saying that's sort of, it goes along the narrative of, you know, Guy, Guy Martin, you know, plays against the rules. And, you know, when, when he does sort of get penalised, um, you know, he, you know if, if they're being arc with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be arc with them. Mm -hmm. But say, like, I was thinking this at the time, like, say when you were making this documentary, the documentary maker, this probably isn't the case, but I was just thinking generally when making a documentary, he may have spent exactly the same amount of time with all the riders, just, you know, end up with hundreds of hours of films. And it sort of turned out that Guy Martin was the most, for want of a better word, interesting character out of everyone there. So he becomes the sort of main protagonist yeah. of the documentary, but at no point when the beginning of the documentary did they have any sort of idea of his character. So it became, oh, he kind of stands out as a bit sort of the person that may put bums on seats in the cinema. It just so happened that Guy Mine was a bit of a bit of a rebel, a bit of a renegade. But none of these yeah. guys are like top guys. And yeah. he had the big crush. Yeah. Because I would have, I would have hard have thought he was dead. I would have thought, I thought if I if I didn't know or if I'd watched that, I'd have been like, he's dead. You know, he must yeah. be dead. Yeah. Just it, that was insane. My theory is originally this documentary was going to be about Ian Hutchinson, 
the guy that won all five races and broke yeah. both of his records and stuff. But he's so fucking boring. <laughs> I think that when they started making it, they're like, it's guy, yeah. guys, yeah, it's just one five race, it's three and a good, yeah, I'm really mm-hmm. happy. I just thought they thought this guy's boring. Let's make it about this other boring <laughs> guy. He's a nutcase. He's way more fun. Yeah. But I don't think it was about him either because they wouldn't have known he was going to win all five. If, you know, it's, that's a mad and insane coincidence. So I just think it's interesting because I remember Shafi and I were talking about this. It's like when Shafi had the Red Arrow pilots in his restaurant, these guys aren't Tom Cruise, Mavericks. They're not, they're the most, they're kind of boring and you have to be. You can't be a sort of maverick, thrill-seeking, and nutcase doing this stuff. You have to be sort of icy cold, calculated, yeah. like Formula One drivers and stuff. Formula One drivers are, are dull. You know, like these guys are just dull. Yeah, because if you are flamboyant, you can't do it. What, James Hunt? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can say that about a lot of kind of some of the best athletes out there. Is that they did? You know, they're dull as dishwater when you. Like exactly. when you interview them, and you know, but it's just they're 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 not there to you know they don't they don't take PR lessons or whatever. They're just there to not all these, but they, these are guys. Their life is on the line, you know. Like a lot of sports people are one track minded, but these are guys that are they put their lives on the line. This is more than a sport. I feel that these guys are just so machine like. Because you you just can't be emotional like being a surgeon and stuff. You just it's operating on a different level, and they're not really human, or or better humans. I don't know, but like to ride these bikes around those courses, you you have to you have to be the Terminator. You can't be a normal human being because how the fuck can you take a corner like that at 160 miles an hour on a bike? It's just they they are. This isn't a documentary about humans. This is a documentary about some other kind of breed of well, monkeys that we don't know they about. Said it takes three years to learn the course, don't they? And yeah. There was that guy that had one yeah. years ago who was going around in the car saying, yeah, 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 yeah. on this corner, turn 90 degrees, get up to fourth, down to second. You know, so he'd learn that all in his head, knew it all off by heart. He'd reach the high, the peak, and he could never get it back. Yeah. 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 It's, oh, it's just... Well, yeah. while I was watching that, I was like, you're on the wrong lane, mate. That's <laughs> 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 the left lane. I was like, uh, I was like shitting myself for him. I was like, why? Someone's going to drive in front of you, you know. <laughs> I've got a confession. I, I had no idea that the TT race was a bike race. I, had wow, no, I, thought, I thought it was a car race. I didn't know. <laughs> no idea. Oh, my wow. God. Isn't there like a... A graphic of a bike? Or... No, but I was aware of the TT race before. I'd heard of the TT race, but I didn't right. know it was a bike race. I thought it was a car race. Um, Andy, what... Yeah. This is going to sound like a stupid question. What's the... fastest oh, so you've ever gone on the bike? Yeah, yeah. Like, what How? What sort of experience have you had, like, you know, dr- racing at that sort of... Well, not even kind of close to that speed, but as in what's the closest you've been to that sort of experience on a bike i've done about 125 and it's 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 uh anything above 70 is pretty mad 90 (laughs) gets pretty dangerous once you're at 100 and you're going over 100 it oh my god it's um it's your senses it's it's mental like i don't know if you remember i took you to the cinema once and you're on the back of my bike and we were going around the roundabout and I tried to get as close as that lorry and I was screaming at you to jump on the lorry because we were going to see Mad Max. Remember that? And I was like, be Max, Happy. And you were like, fucking shut up and get away. Well, we were doing about 20, 20 miles an hour then. So imagine you're feeling then and times it by five. But it's nuts. <laughs> Overall, it was, a, it was a surreal experience being on the back of a bike with you, to be honest. <laughs> Andy, I was on the back of your bike years ago and... We probably didn't go over 30, but I shit myself like the whole way home. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's like you're flying. And, but this is the cheesiest thing in the world. But I promise you, the faster you go, it feel it does feel like time slows. Because you're just, you, you're looking at everything like <laughs> danger. It's really, really hard to, to describe. Well, just just um, throw out the quote from Ford versus Ferrari. Go on and say it. Uh, what, what was the quote? 
Remember when Matt he takes this, <laughs> when he takes this sort of guy out in the car with him, just sort of really takes him up to the max, and it's like when you get to this point. Well, I can't really remember the quote now. Sorry, but when he's talking about when you're driving at a certain point that no real humans drive at, once you're like in the 150, 160s, like what was the quote in Ford versus Ferrari? It's like oh, no, you told me to do the quote, and then I didn't know what the quote was, and then yeah. you couldn't remember the quote. I don't remember either. <laughs> this might not it? be the highlight of the podcast. <laughs> but you, you spoke about it four months ago. What was but it? You talk about the seven thousand red. Been, yeah, right? and everything. But you, you like you enter a different dimension. Oh wait, that's Buckaroo Banzu. Wait, <laughs> can I just say something? There's a point at seven thousand no. RPM where everything fades. The machine. See, I knew you'd remember it. I knew you'd just remember. disappears, and yes. all that's left is a body moving through space and time. Seven thousand RPM. That's where you meet it. You feel yeah. it coming. It creeps up on you, close in your ear, asks you a question. The only question that matters, who are you? Yeah, exactly. So, Dave, it's pretty much like, you know, when you like shave your chest and then you like, you ejaculate on yourself. So that, that brief second. Wait there, where like did this come from? Over a long of time. <laughs> That's what it's like. Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't think I had a brief Chest ejaculation. Before. That's a good segue. Guy Martin talks about wanky a lot, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, when Andy said that, Dave felt like he, like he really connected to this film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listeners, if anyone, Andy Newlands isn't actually a um, professional motorbike rider. If, if any of you are thinking that, he just sometimes drives really fast on his bike and then crashes. <laughs> That's usually what happens. <laughs> seven cocktails. Oh, I once seven. crashed in in stationary traffic. It was so bad. <laughs> Right in front That's of my taking, army. So what are you doing? Well, where yeah. where did you do that 120, <laughs> Andy? Oh, I did it. Um I can't remember the exact place, but it was in the UK on one of the motorway. I was going to a friend's house in um Paul or Portsmouth or somewhere like that. I wouldn't suggest it, Chef. Too mental. So um see what's happened with this, because it's a documentary, we're talking more about the sort of subject matter, aren't we, than the actual film itself. Well, it's surprising you said that. Okay. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's just I thought you would talk about how it was shot because I some of the seat the shots in this were mm. insane. Well, yeah, I, yeah. it's kind of like I love this when they go to the sort of helicopter cam. That is my favorite. I just yeah. that long and it does remind me a bit of Mission Impossible. I just yeah, I just love those long shots with the bikes. It, like Mission Impossible Four and Five. It's just it's just incredible. Two. No, that was. That's one of my favorite films ever, but that's they didn't do the long shot in Mission Impossible 2, that was more sort of close ups and stuff. But in four and five, they sort of really pan back, sort yeah. of, I guess, um, like, um, oh my god, Top Gear and stuff like that. What this made me think of is you know, The Matrix Reloaded when Trinity's on that bike and she sort of goes, goes, yes, like, mate. Side the to side to, yeah, 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 that you know, that's sick. Well, yeah, that would be the next level while of Man TT if they had the traffic. I, what are you about, Debbie? <laughs> why, did it, why did it remind you of that? The way she sort of bounces side to side when she's like going really fast. I don't know. It's what like you turn that. on a bike. Yeah, but she's going, she's doing that because she's driving in between oncoming traffic. Morpheus is on the lorry just filming it. Yeah, exactly. Go get the key master. <laughs> I mean, really, Shafi, I can't believe it made you think of that. What's wrong with you? Well, it did. It did. Well, that's go. kind of. Um, Kind of weird. Well, you're a fucking idiot. So um, <laughs> that aerial shot where that guy crashes just just yeets it off the cliff. That's fucking. Yeah, he yeah. fucking yeah. bounced, didn't he? Yeah. Over yeah, yeah, a yeah. stone. Yeah, you see him like fly in mid air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He if he hadn't bounced like that, he and then gone into the wall. That would have, I'm sure he would have died. Yeah. But he actually bounced uh, over it. <laughs> that's crazy. It was fucking mad. That. But imagine like if it had been a bit wet and you didn't sort of hit the curb, you might have just gone flying like a sledge down the down the hill and not been too badly hurt, as ridiculous yeah. as it sounds. But because he hit that thing, didn't he? And he was going back on himself. I was like, fuck it out. I, lo- I love that. I, I mean, you know, say what you will about Jared Leto, but uh, I love the sort of narration before the race where yeah. Yeah. He, talk, he talks about, he says that during this race, you know, you're you'll see, you'll, he like lists the injuries and then he goes, and much worse. And then yeah. like, yeah. 
Does anyone know how he got that gig? I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. Just it's it's sort so of... him, Keanu, Brad Pitt are massively into their motorbikes, and they go to the events like so. They're well known. They're like well, there's a lot of Hollywood celebrities that are just cruising around this this joint. Keanu makes his own bikes, doesn't he? Yeah, as if he wasn't already cool enough. Wow. He is the coolest man alive, man. Like... So it sounds like you all enjoyed this. I'm I'm absolutely amazed by this. Yeah, well, it's I, good I, I, too, yeah. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like it's more than a film. That's why that's why I was sort of making fun of it, but it was only to say that it's more than a film. Like it's just it's just incredible. My favorite bit of this film, which I know that Andy loved, is where um guys just on the bike. Please say the music, just, please. And the, yeah, they're playing the getaway by the music. Yeah. It's just the aerial shots of him riding around as like yeah. when that song came out, I'm like, yes. I've not heard this song for 10 years. It's amazing. Imagine seeing that on a big screen. Like, I know I it's not a film, but that, that would be amazing. Jeez, you've got, like, some bad boy uh, speakers next to him as well. Yeah, so they're 10 years old, 11 years old now. Jeez. Wow. I'm thinking yeah. of, actually, I was going to invite you both home for a Mortal Kombat premiere. Get, getting it from base sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> God damn my. <laughs> mm. Wow. Yeah, man. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat, come around. Fourteen ninety nine, so five or eight. And if you bring some food, actually, maybe you should pay seven fifty each. I think this is the moment where we literally lost our last listener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, edit all the Mortal Kombat chat. Let's pull it back because but, yeah, I guess you can edit that. Mm, because... Just like Guy Martin. <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to Guy Martin, so the fact, yeah, you guys, um, Kyle and Dave, talked about how you uh, did not like Guy Martin before you watched this film. Has your sort of opinion on him changed? No. Um, to be honest, I didn't know a lot about him. I just saw this weird guy on telly, and I thought, oh, I can't be fucking can't be asked with this guy. So whenever he was on, I just switched off. What's he like yeah. on telly? Exactly the same as he was on that. He's like a northern cartoon character. So he's yeah. a presenter, but he doesn't present. It's people talking to him. So Guy Martin's speed, it's not him presenting. It's the same kind of documentary style. He never talks to the camera. Um, apparently he's got Asperger's, so he's yeah. he doesn't like doing all stuff like that. Apparently he turned down the Top Gear job as well. Yeah. Uh, when, when Chris Evans took over Top Gear, he offered it, him to be a co-presenter and he said, Nah, mate, you're all right. Oh. You know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I quite liked him in this. Yeah, I did I did like him. Don't want to watch any of his other stuff. Can't say I'd be bothered about watching him try and get the fastest milk cart or whatever. But yeah, I, I enjoyed yeah. him in this film. Uh, Andy, uh, sorry, Dave, you said that your opinion hasn't really changed. Uh-oh. No, like, I, I just find him, he's like, it's almost like he's sort of, he sort of talks and acts like he's, from the 1920s and it just he he annoys me and his i think his jokes are quite crap and stuff but ultimately as much as i don't particularly like him as a character he's nice enough he's harmless and and then he goes out and gets on a rocket ship and rides it around the isle of man risking his life and then smashes into into a wall and flies through the air in a ball of fire and then just five seconds five minutes later is in hospital bed just going all right, and I'm just like he's hot as fuck in that bed as well. I absolutely love him because of what he does. It's, so it's like it's like if if say it's sort of like you know when you have to separate the art from the person, like with yeah. so many things that he what he does is it makes me love him more than my really good is. friends because it's just like wow, my good friends don't do that, you know. But yeah, I I I I, I admire him so much the bravery of doing that and just taking it to the edge like that i'm blown away so he's one of my favorite people in the world even though i don't like his personality if that makes any sense yes absolutely well said mm. uh andy you've always been a fan of him um and I, I i think uh i think if i went on holiday for a week with him or i was in the big brother house with him i'd be voting him out on the first day but <laughs> yeah. to echo what dave says like I'm not really bothered about That's because I've been in my like. bedroom wanking. <laughs> yeah, this, he's just, he's, he's a braver soul than I am. And he's doing a lot more like crazy stuff with his life than I am. So 
I fucking yeah. hell, fair play to you, mate. Like, go for it. Like, exactly. It's absolutely. So like, get get on that rocket ship. If you, if someone asked me, if I was sort of walking around that, um, getting to know all the races, and someone asked me who the creepiest one was, I would say Guy Martin because he Wolverine-looking motherfucker, and he <laughs> lives in his van and 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 wanks all night. So. Um, <laughs> Why don't I like him? He looks like Wolverine. He lives in a van. He wanks a lot. He's oh, I love him actually. I'm sorry. He lives in the nineteen seventies. Just, just let him yeah. fucking live his life. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Andy, you're one divorce away from being that man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Put no. your laptop out and watch the watch the road. Uh, just going down Green <laughs> Island. Just gonna go. <laughs> Have a wank down St. Catherine's Pier. <laughs> oh, this simple is a simple man, the simple life. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's got decent sideburns, though. Yeah, do, you, do you have any desire to be a mechanic? No, I'm too stupid. Like, this is my problem in life, right? I never research anything. So, I like football. <laughs> I don't know any footballers' names. I love motorbikes. I don't know what the races are called. And that's one of your skills, Shaf. You, yeah, you Shaf know is really so good much about yeah. things like your hobbies. I really respect that. I'm just too lazy. I just, like Dave said earlier, I'm just an idiot <laughs> who likes to see things go round and round. It's true. Well, no, it's, it's, to be honest, I think people like me are, it's what you call sad, where I think, nah. and you can actually enjoy your life. And, you know. Yeah, no, um, I'd agree with Shaf, you know, yeah. But it's impressive. Well, I'd agree. Oh. <laughs> uh, just like this, this podcast just <laughs> slowly turning into Shappy and Dave's friendship. Just every week. <laughs> I'm at war with everyone. This. In conclusion, I should have chosen the lighthouse because that is mental. That film. Well, that, isn't that that's a film about wanking in solitary? Uh, yeah, that's what made me think about it. <laughs> in a solitary location. I'm just going to go <laughs> down path to path, back to receive yeah. and wank into a well. If I had a steak, I would fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so, wish I the lighthouse. Um, are there any other sort of moments, like stand-up moments of the film that anyone wants to sort of bring up? Yeah, so one of my favourite bits in the film was when the marshal who goes to the event every year gets emotional and he just he's he's like holding a mug or something, but it means it means everything yeah. to him that his home is where this event takes place. And for some people, it's it's almost spiritual. Because when you're out there on the bike, I promise you, if you want to silence the, the mind, you can do that through prayer or meditation. And I know this sounds nuts, but you can achieve it on a bike going at very, very high speeds. Something happens in here where it's just silent. Um, that's That was a very powerful moment in the film then. You can, it's very rare that you, you'll see somebody get so choked up about, an, you know, an animate object, because I love that bit of the film. That, for me, and the bit Carl said before about a guy was riding the mountain to the, when the, the music was playing. It means yeah. everything. That reminded Literally me of the music, 2002 yeah. in your fiesta, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly, the, the zombie nation. <laughs> <laughs> and the prodigy. Another bit that I want to talk about was it was a very brief scene, and I think that they probably wanted this guy to be part of the documentary, but he's never interviewed once, so I assume he didn't want to be part of it. And it was the guy whose dad died two days before he won it. Yeah, gosh. That's fucking mental. Oh, Ian Dunlop. Yeah. His dad yeah, died yeah. in the race, and then two days later, he fucking won yeah. it. That's mental. I, thought they, I yeah. thought they did interview him, because I was trying to figure out who he was, and then it cuts to like a sort of, He's not really chubby, but he's um, he's like young, and I thought that was him because he and he starts talking to the camera. But maybe it was someone else. Hmm. Yeah, that rings well. Can't remember them interviewing an Irish guy. Yeah, it's the Dunlop um, the Dunlop family. Right. So that's another thing. Just, just this. There is some real human emotion on display throughout this entire film. Like you know, the death oh, of that probably, guy, yeah. his yeah. wife. The way she has to move on with her life, like yeah, yeah man. It's, they're it's, all like, just, he died doing what he loves. 
Yeah. That's fucking mental. I know. I know. It's always that cliche with all that stuff, though, isn't it? All those extremes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that guy says it's really sad, isn't it? But we'll be starting again in a few hours and it'll be no slow. Yeah. Yeah. Mad. Mad. That's fucking hardcore, like, like psyche, that man. Well, that's that's what I'm saying. Tangent, that's, you know, that's uh, like that scene um, between Adonis Creed and uh, and Rocky where um, yeah. Adonis uh, says, well, um, maybe he, he died doing what he loves, you know, wh- which was in, in the ring. Maybe he wanted to die like that. And then wow. uh, Spice, and then um, Rocky says, um, no, I think he would rather be still alive here talking to you. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's why... When they get those lines right in Rocky, they can really take it to the next level. Yeah. Apollo point. certainly didn't want to die in that ring against um, Ivan Drago. Um, oh, I mean, stick then, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, I did, mate. Yeah. Could have said Dolph Lundgren, but... <laughs> I might watch Rocky for tonight. Hello, Polly. <laughs> you know that on the... He's doing a director's cut, isn't he, where he's editing the robot out? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Is that that's number three though, isn't it? Nice number four. Oh, number four. Why are you getting rocking wrong? Oh. Yeah, my fav- my favorite is the music that plays when they first introduce the robot. It's sort of like a dubstep. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. It's awesome. Um okay. Like, like, <laughs> I love yeah. the way they feel like I'll edit that out. It doesn't matter. This is quite funny. Any other moments that I love the Guy Martin crash. I thought that was awesome. It was so mental that they got footage of that. And then they, like, the paramedics, like, they literally couldn't have chosen a better year to turn up and film this. Like, just absolutely nuts. And then even the guy, the five-time winner, you know. That's insane. First time ever. And then he lost his foot. Don't cut my levers. Don't cut my levers. Don't cut my levers. Did he? No, he didn't. He didn't lose it. Yeah, I didn't. Did he lose his foot? And then no, they he put didn't, it no, they saved it. They were they were they wanted to amputate it, but he said, "Don't do it." You know, like, refused mm. to let them do it. Oh, I thought it had like literally come off, and they got it on within like a, a minute or something, and then, like they just got it working. Over. Yeah, he so he he rode again. Wow, yeah, because that's, that's mad. Because watching that, it get him sort of hit, it ran over just below the knee. It was fucking hell, man, crazy. That's if we talk about callbacks to Ford v Ferrari. It's interesting that they don't finish, like a lot of documentaries, which I would have expected they would have done in this because it is a documentary that it ends in Legends where it says, you know, the, what happens, you know, what, you oh, know, yeah. what every, every racer, but they don't do that. And I was expecting that. I was like, oh, mm. but, you know. That was a um, weird ending being about him because although he won the five, they'd not really focused on him that much at all. It seemed a bit yeah. weird to end with him. It was almost like they had a bit of B-roll left at the end and thought, I'll just stick that on, you know. But it's interesting because I felt like it did need to have something on this guy because you can't let him sort of guy might steal the thunder when this guy has won five on the the bounce for the first time in history. It was just like, wow, so what's this guy up to? And unfortunately, it's 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 like Kyle says, he's too good to have as a main character in the movie, in the film, despite his dominance in sport he's participating with him so then you have to just go you default to the character because at the end of the day the film needs to be entertaining oh, yeah it's mad isn't it yeah yeah you've got to please the masses even with this wow mm. wow wow i wow. wish i'd watched it in 3d as well because it's the technology is meant to be absolutely nuts when you're watching this in 3d I hate nah, 3D. Man. don't ever watch a film in 3d no, I hate 3D. Really? Yeah. If you want to ruin a film, watch it in 3D. I think the first time I ever saw it was with Avatar, which was great. But everything else since then has just been a bit, yeah. See, I watched I watched Avatar in 3D. And I was like, what's the what's the big deal? But the film that I did notice the 3D was um was Life of Pi. But still, like, I but and then what they basically uh, and then I saw Godzilla on, in 3D. And I left with a headache. I was like, I'm never watching another 3D film again. Did we watch Dread in 3D? Yeah, we watched Dread in 3D. Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, and that's just like, that upsets me to think that. And did we watch, I think I might watch Prometheus in, yeah, in yeah, 3D. We, we all watched Prometheus, didn't we? We all watched Prometheus. And that is one of the worst 
and that would be one of the worst films I've ever seen. And that had I nothing to do with it being a 3D. This was. <laughs> what an absolute pile of rubber. That is so oh, bad. Mate. Podcast have listeners, got, we're going to have this one time. Have you, got, oh. have you guys rewatched Pr- Prometheus? Yeah, loads yeah. of times. I don't even see yeah. Alien Covenant. I would refuse to watch it. I'd rather watch Blood Simple than Prometheus. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, listeners, one day we're going to have what are the worst films ever made, but with like a decent cast and a decent director and stuff. I think this is a really interesting conversation to have. What are the worst films? No, ever I don't. Made. I think that would be too depressing. So, Prometheus, Blood Simple. <laughs> right. Good night. I'm leaving. You're an idiot, by the way. You're a real fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> It's such a good film. It's so highly rated. It's I'm so sorry. shit. I'm sorry oh, that the cars so were rubbish. driving slowly. I know the cars just oh. drove down the road slowly. And Here's 20 race. minutes. I'm going to wash the blood with this shirt for 20 yeah, minutes. Because that's, sure. that's what it would be like if you just murdered somebody. 20 minutes. Oh, it's fucking gritty. Them. It's gritty. <laughs> oh, you're oh. Now oh. we're going to the car. Driving along. <laughs> la, 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 la. Now I'm going to break into the house. The worst (laughs) robbery scene. No, now there's a member of the crew in the house for no reason. This is outrageous. I don't remember that narrative. I don't remember that the narration over. Now I'm driving to the (laughs) car. So right. So Newlands Newlands chooses films about things that go fast. Kyle chooses a film about things that go fast through different dimensions, and Shafi chooses a thing about that goes fast through a village. Oh, just morons! All three of them, dumbasses. Oh, I can't believe I'm on this podcast. Trap. Wow. It's, all it's going to be is things that go fast. Oh, <laughs> a ball, a car, or a spaceship. I That's wish all it's going to be. People <laughs> went oh, slow. Let's move it all time. Enjoy it. Take your Wait time. Wait till my choice, Dave, then. Wait till my choice. <laughs> What's it going to be? Oh, please. Okay. All right. Is well, it going to be anyway, about hovercraft? Any other points about this film? Or? Contrary to what I was just saying, this is. I love this film. Thank you, thank you for contrary choosing to, it. It was absolutely contrary to brilliant. calling Newlands a massive twat. <laughs> He's all right, honestly, dude. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> right, I cannot thank you enough. I think we've understated how much Guy Martin <laughs> talks about wanking. <laughs> honestly, I don't remember him ever talking about wanking. I don't know what any of you. It's about, about fifteen times, mate. It's about every sentence is about I'll have a wank. <laughs> what are you doing? Really, it after. really worried me when they actually did film it in the van. <laughs> what, I was like, I was like, what are they going to show? He was studying the track in the van, like Zen master. And even his mate was talking about it. It's like when your toes are cowling, I know you're having a wank. His mate does it like, and the what was it? He. He was like his mate was sleeping in the bunk on top of him, and he was yeah. this, oh. getting spray back. There's no wanking in this film. <laughs> no wonder they called it closer to the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that in three days. Bloody hell! <laughs> well, I'm glad, Dave. I'm glad you liked it. I'm I'm very very happy about this. Yes, no, thank you. It was a very, it was incredible. And like I say, it's more than I a thought, film. Much, I thought much, Kyle would hate it. I'm, I'm chuffed to bits with that. So good. And oh, I didn't even say it. I got it in the charity shop for one pound. I just came across it this week. What are the chances, eh? What? Mm. What, this film? Yeah, man. Charity shop, one pound. Is it Blu ray? No, just a. Um, That's quality. Just um, DVD. Yeah, it's what I play though, Dave. You, you, you can watch it for free. You wasted a quid, mate. <laughs> I was going to say that. You did, there's so many things you could have done with that Ooh. one pound. Oh, giving, giving to charity is not a waste, is it? <laughs> so, whatever. Oh, yeah, I'll just download it. Yeah, why didn't you just, just give them a quid and then they I'll could just send them to somebody else and made another quiz? So if anything, you've taken money from them. Well, someone might never have bought it. I would have bought it. Um, <laughs> no, mate, you can just watch it on the iPad. It's not on the iPad. What are you on about? <laughs> okay, so um, should we give our one word reactions to this film? Yes, um, I've got a theme tune for this part of the show. Uh, okay, all right. Well, we'll, we'll leave yours to last then, Kyle. 
Um, so, I'll so play we... your theme tune now. If you like it, I'll leave it in. If you don't like it, we'll sing the theme it tune. Play the theme tune. Are you okay. going to sing it? No, no, I'm going to play it off my phone. So, you need, but, just need so to be quiet. quiet. Don't interrupt okay, it. So I'll say it then. Kyle, what is your one word reaction to this film? No, 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 no. I'm doing a theme tune that work. introduces oh. this section of the pod. Oh, okay, right, right. Come on, let's hear it then. Go on. There yeah, you dumbass, Shappy. That was obvious. Can you shut the fuck up, Dave? Just for one moment. So this, what did you think it was? It was going to be you Kyle's. Such a slack. You are just such a bellend. Did you really think Kyle had you the theme tune just for him? It was just for him <laughs> for when he does the one thing. Yeah, yeah. Not all of us. I thought that was his. I think he was going to play it as a one-word reaction. No. So, so introduce stupid. this bit again, then, Shappy. <laughs> Okay, right. So, uh, it's for all of us, yeah, Kyle. Just to make that clear, yes, not just yeah. you. Okay, yeah. sorry, I was a bit, wasn't sure. Can you stop being <laughs> such a bitch? Stop being <laughs> such a bitch. Sorry, let me call with a giant bitch. So, anyway, what is everyone's one-word reaction to this film? It's the one-word review. The one-word review. The one-word review. Except for Dave, who spends 15 minutes talking about being so awkward. That's great. <laughs> That's great. Was it something about Dave saying raw Dave and gritty over and yeah, over again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the one word review. The one word review. Something, something, something. Dave's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> That's well done. That's Let's great. Give a round of applause for uh, oh, Kyle there. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, uh, Andy, what is your one-word uh, review for this film? Exhilarating. Okay, how about yours, Kyle? Wanking. Oh, God, <laughs> this is outrageous. <laughs> uh, Dave. Well, I guess if I was going to give it one word of view, I'd have actually gone with exhilarating. I, I, I think that is, that is, there is no better description than I was thinking this is just exhilarating. But, Excellent. but it's more than that. It is, it is. It's more than a film. I don't know, it's more than a film. And it's such a privilege to see into this their lives. This is amazing. I love this. Like, I cannot, I cannot get over it. When you see those shots of the camera almost at wheel level yes. and you just try to put yourself in their place, you try to imagine what it's like. I mean, you can't because you go, I would immediately break, get off the bike and cry. It is, it is insane. It is, it is it's extreme sport. Usually extreme sports are in extreme places, but this isn't extreme. This is, there's a post box. There's a local pub. There's a, someone's house. They like crash, put yeah. Kai Martin's bike into somebody's garden, you know. And it is that's what that's why I found this thing so insanely unique. Like none of us get to go up Everest and watch people climb over the top, but here you could go to the Isle of Man, sit in a little pub, and then go up and watch people taking it to the edge. Seven or eight people who are the best in the world at it. and you can witness this you don't get to witness someone base jumping you don't get to witness someone free climbing but here you do and that is my one word opinion on this film insane i'm so glad you said that because that's what this is it's insane it's just wow yeah could you imagine standing at those corners just a little cobbled high street corner watching them go around 160, 170, 200 miles an hour. It's, it's, it, you witness something that so few people will. And I, I can't go over. I cannot go over. Thank you for making this documentary. Thank you for choosing it. And thank you to myself for pleasure. watching it. My pleasure. It, honestly, it was amazing. Have any civilians died, like, watching it? I assume, ah, I, assume funny so. I looked into that. Not that I not that I know of. Okay, because that bike was anywhere, or a tire could just fly off and just. Hit I know somewhere. it's it's mad, isn't it? It's absolutely mad. There was this race in Italy that was nuts, like a kind of cannibal run stuff in Italy, and they used to race up Italy, and it 
one car crashed, killing 12 people, and they stopped it overnight. And I think if, if, if something like that happened where a spectator was killed here, that may be the point where it, it would get stopped. But, you know, for, not for the sake of anything other than the, the human life. Hopefully it never, ever happens. It'll be, it'll be, it'd be interesting to know from the sort of, uh, from the locals' perspective, how much it sort of disrupts their sort of everyday life when it goes in, like risen or regard when it starts as in, you know, is it sort of treated like a public holiday in uh, <laughs> the, the Isle of Man or, you know, whatever. <laughs> because people can't commute to work because all the roads are closed. I don't think people are being like, giddy, giddy about it. I'm sure they, they love it. This is, the, the pace of, that's the irony of it, isn't it? The pace of life in Isle of Man is pretty slow. And then one week a year, this, this insanity happens. Well, uh, what's Shafi's word? Shafi hasn't done his word. My word got a theme is, tune and everything. My word is edgy. <laughs> Kyle, yes, uh, you have the choice for the next episode. So, drum roll, please. It was supposed to be Dave, but Dave and I had a gentleman's agreement to swap only because the choice that I want to make is leaving Netflix. Oh, great. So so long to watch it. Yeah. Uh, you have to pay for it, mate. I'll give you my login, whatever. Um, Shafi, you may have seen it, it, but if you have seen it, you'd have seen it recently, so that is within the rules. And I've chosen this film. We're not going to go into it much, but I watched it recently. I really liked it. I thought we guys have a good discussion about it. My choice is mid-90s. What's that? I might have actually put that on my... That might be in my 333 films to watch this year. it's written and directed by Jonah Hill. So, yeah, it, it leaves Netflix on 31st of May. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Great shout, Kyle. Great shout. Okay, cool. All right. Well, you've been listening to the Who Drop the Platform podcast. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Bye.